Hello everybody and welcome to Theology 101. Welcome to our Friday series where we are going over different pictures of faith from Hebrews chapter 11. The person that we will look at today is Noah. By faith, Noah being warned by God concerning events as yet unseen, in reverent fear, constructed an ark for the saving of his household. By this he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. What we will see with Noah is that faith in God means to obey God's word, even if it seems unbelievable. Now the audience of this letter comes from a Jewish background, so they are very familiar with the story of Noah and can fill the white space between the lines. Maybe some of us who grew up in church are very familiar with the story of Noah. But I think it is important for us to go back and look at Noah's life and to see his faith. Two phrases sum up Noah's life. He was warned by God concerning events as yet unseen, and in fear constructed an ark. In other words, he received the message from God and he responded with obedience. By the time of Noah, sin has really messed up the world. We have seen polygamy, murder, and violence began to affect society like a pandemic. About 1500 or so years have passed since God created Adam and Eve and things have gotten horrible. And because of all this wickedness, God makes a shocking statement to Noah. And God said to Noah, I have determined to make an end of all flesh for the earth is filled with violence through them. Behold, I will destroy them with the earth. This must have been shocking for Noah to hear. For Noah to hear that everybody, including his friends and neighbors, will be wiped out must have made his mind explode. Now no one knew for a while that judgment will come because Enoch told Methuselah his grandfather and Methuselah told his father Lamech and Lamech told him. So hundreds of years have passed but God did not judge mankind yet. So I'm sure that it would have been tempting for Noah to think that the message of judgment that his great grandfather Enoch mentioned was a mistake. Maybe God won't judge anymore but now God repeats the message he gave to Enoch to Noah. So what is Noah supposed to do? God tells him to build a wooden ark. What? The word ark literally is a box or chest. Build a big wooden box, Noah. This is not a ship like we imagine. There is no propeller, there are no sails, and there is no steering wheel. And to make things worse, Noah is not a shipbuilder or a carpenter from what we could tell. This is something he cannot do on his own. He probably had his three sons help him and maybe even paid some people to help him build this ark. And the reason why I say this is because of the size of the ark. This is how you are to make it. The length of the ark, 300 cubits, its breadth, 50 cubits, and its height, 30 cubits. This box is to be 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, and 45 feet high. Just to give you an idea of how large this ark is, there hasn't been a ship of this size until you get into the 19th century when ships were being built by steel and iron. God also tells Noah to build a room with a pitch or tent covering the top. And based on the dimensions of this wooden rectangle, the rooms would have numbered in the thousand. God is commanding Noah to build a box that is longer than four football fields, as wide as six freeway lanes, and four stories tall. And if you were to understand how big the ark was in terms of animals, the ark could hold 522 crates, which would hold about 240 sheep each. A sheep is about an average size of most land animals, so according to this calculation, this ark can hold 125,000 animals. This is not an easy message to receive. Noah is supposed to believe that God will wipe out the world, which has never been seen in history, and he's supposed to build a big wooden box that he can't make on his own, and he used to make thousands of rooms in this box, and he doesn't even know why. But now we finally see why God wants Noah to build this ark. For behold, I will bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh, in which is the breath of life under heaven. Everything that is on the earth shall die. You want to know how hard this message is to believe? Noah would not have even known what a flood is. Nobody did at this point in history. Why? Rain has never come on earth up to this point. Nobody has witnessed water come from the sky. The way that the earth was hydrated up to this point was through a mist from the ground. If you think that is hard to believe, God tells Noah to gather every type of animals to fill up the thousands of rooms. Have you ever tried to grab a chicken running away from you? And he can't hunt them, he must capture them alive. And he has to get one one male and female, which means he has to check their privates after he catches them. Not only that, but Noah must also store enough food to feed him and his family and all these animals for one year, which is the length of time Noah ends up being on the ark. And to make matters worse, God didn't tell Noah how long it would take to build this ark. But we know that God doesn't bring the flood for another 120 years. Wouldn't you give up after 50 or 60 years of building? But Noah responds with obedience because of his faith. Noah did this. He did all that God commanded him. Now you see why God looked kindly 
heavily on Noah. He trusted in God's word and he responded with obedience. And you want to know why Noah was able to obey God with this huge leap of faith? Look at how Noah was described. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his generation. Noah walked with God. Noah was only able to respond with this huge leap of faith because he has been taking daily steps of faith with God. Not only did Noah build an ark, but also he preached and told everybody about God's coming judgment. The apostle Peter calls Noah a preacher of righteousness, and the writer of Hebrew adds this, by this he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. Can you imagine how difficult it must have been for Noah to tell people God's ridiculous message? Talking about a rain that never existed, a flood that was never seen, and a worldwide judgment that people couldn't accept? Can you imagine investing your time and money for this message? Well, Noah trusted in God's word and he spent 120 years building this ark. Even though people scoffed at him and must have thought he was crazy, Noah told them that God will send water from the sky. And Noah didn't preach from a pulpit, but from an ark. And after 120 years of preaching, nobody responded. Although Noah didn't see any fruit to his labor, he did what God told him to do and God rewarded his faith when the time came. God did save Noah and his family from the flood just as he promised. Why? Because faith in God is a working faith and it obeys his word, even if it seems unbelievable. If you want to study more about Hebrews chapter 11, I'll leave a link to a recommended resource below in the description box. If you missed the last video about Enoch's faith, I'll leave a link here for you to watch. Until next time, see you!